this is Dorrington Cemetery on the south of the county of Sussex in England. As you come into the cemetery on your right hand side is an area with the plaque reading this part of the cemetery is to be reserved for the graves of disabled ex-servicemen presented to the Queen Alexander Hospital Home Clifford House. And behind that stone you can see the graves marked out. These on the front here on the right hand side are the Commonwealth War Grave stones. And on the left we have some more, but these all belong to those that were in the Royal Air Force. This is one from the Air Force side and it's Flight Sergeant WKJ Bartlett, Air Bomber, Royal Air Force, 1945, age 25. And from those on the right hand side, one picked at random, Sergeant C.P. Binstead, RM, HMS President 3, and that was 1945. And from the many rows of memorials to the disabled ex-servicemen, one picked at random, John Patrick Spruhan, Pioneer Corps, who died in 65. Opposite that area we have this grave at a bit of an alarming angle and this is to Edward Alfred William Scroggy, killed by enemy action 1st of July 1944 age 37 and beneath that we have his mother and his father Nearby are two further war graves and uh, please excuse the noise in the background. We've got the A24 main road running right past this area of the cemetery. So you'll see and hear quite a lot of traffic. The first one is to Gunner P.S. Hazel, Royal Artillery, 1942, aged 38. Close by is Lance Bombardier C.W. Cook, Royal Artillery, 1942, age 31. And at the bottom of the stone, the relatives have added, they miss them most who loved them best, R.I.P. Both of these two were in the Royal Artillery, and interestingly, they were both uh, quite old, as uh, soldiering goes. There's an area here curbed off with uh, six identical stones with metal crosses on the top. The inscription is difficult to read. This is probably the best of the six. Uh, it doesn't seem to be in English at the top. And then it says Mere Mary Paula de Sion. And if I go down to the bottom of the stone, Mer Mary John de Sion, 1958. Uh, they all seem to have, well I can read it, uh, the similar sort of names on them. Underneath this huge chestnut tree is this stone to Beatrice Mary Godfrey, 1941. What caught my eye was the piece on the left, which has got a very Art Deco look about it, with the straight lines and the angles. Close by the Chapel of Rest, we have a very large 
memorial here. This reads Harry Heatley, 1860-1932, and his sister Ada O'Kell Norris, knee Heatley. And on the other side we have the rather unusual name Adar, A-D-A-H, Adar Elizabeth Knee Gresham, 1861-1940. This one catches the eye because of the very large typeface used on it. This is in memory of Florrie, dearly loved wife of Edwin Lusher, Edwin A. Lusher, 1879-1940 and then Edwin Beneath. Very clear to read. Beneath the trees here in the shade, on this plot they've actually put a stone bench as the memorial. The first name at the top is Norman Richard Bardon, who died in 1946. And then beneath that we have Caroline Jane Barton and Marjorie Emily Barton. A nice way of setting up a memorial, a seat in the shade. A splendid memorial towards the top of the graveyard. This one reads Jack J.V. Cowtan, aged 20 years, killed by enemy action on Dunkirk Beach, 30th of May 1940. He lived every moment of his life and then gave all for his country. This one is in loving memory of Grace Martin, wife and mother, and her baby daughter Heather. And just the one date, 30th of December 1984. So are we to presume that they both died on that one day. Beneath that we've got Arthur George Martin, her husband, 14th of March 1996. This is to J.B. Usher, Chief Stoker on the Royal Navy, 1945-859. He was very clearly a, a career Navy man. 59 was getting near near retirement age. You don't often see them on these war memorial of that sort of age. Something different on a more modern grave. This is Cheryl Roberts, 2010. Beside this grave we have the dancing couple and on the diamond shaped stone it reads Daniel John Hewitt 1993 this is one of the newer parts of the cemetery. A lot of fresh flowers here. The old art of grave digging has now been replaced by this modern JCB. The large table tombs, more normally associated with Victorian Victorian era. Here's a very modern one, quite unusual to see that nowadays. This is Christopher Robin Chapman who died in 2019. I don't have any idea of the nationality of this one. You can see the name there on the front. Reverend Father Doctor at the back we have an image of the gentleman concerned and above it is an inscription and a foreign script. I'll leave you to tell me what all that's about. 
This is rather different. Uh, we have this very large image of a couple on the stone. But perhaps more interestingly is down here, we have what looks like a rule, and DR, a metric. And there is actually a website, drmetric.com, written underneath. One here that's modern, but uh, this is to Harry Giles, 1992. What I like about it is the images of the horses at the top. They just tell you a little bit about what his interest was uh, while he was alive. This one beside the path reads Pilot Officer Eric James Paddy Keeble, age 21, killed on active service, flying, 25th of June 1940, buried here. And underneath it says also Flight Lieutenant Peter Gardner Keeble, age 25, killed in action flying at Malta. This is 16th of July 1940. So if we're assuming they are brothers, it's quite likely on the same stone here, then they died around three to four weeks apart, both in flying incidents. This one is quite a distinctive design and you'll see immediately the Art Deco influences. And it is Annie Florence, the wife of F.H.B. Cumming, who died in 1932. And that was really at the peak of the Art Deco design movement. And here we have a memorial following that style. This one is Martin Kemp Warren, 1996. But if you look at the background, you'll see the inscription is on a sailing boat sail. And we've got seagulls around it and even some shells at the bottom. So we get a picture of the interest of this man in life. Well, I very much enjoyed my visit to Dorrington Cemetery. And I'm going to leave it there for now. Till the next time.